Hello, friends and neighbors near and far. I'm not going to introduce myself tonight because I'm getting sick of hearing my own name. But I am going to talk about faulty logic, one of three key ingredients in your dreams, according to me, which also include day residue and false remembrance. But the topic today, faulty logic, I first want to nail that word faulty. You know, in the waking world, faulty logic can get you in trouble. You might walk in front of a bus. And what happens if you walk in front of a bus in the dream world? Well, you might wake up. Gee, what a shame. You know, so consequently, logic in dreams doesn't have the consequences. A failure of logic in dreams does not have the consequences that a failure of logic has in the waking world. Now, therefore, for creative people like you and me, we can use that as a tool because we are not bound by the logic of the real world. We are not restrained by it. The, it's flexible and we can use that flexibility to experience things we otherwise would not be able to experience. Now anyone that's had transcendent dreams or mystical states of consciousness or even those that have taken uh, you know, hallucinogenic drugs like LSD and those kinds of things will tell you that the logic in those altered states seems to be when you're in those states a higher logic. more all-inclusive and all-encompassing and and from my own experience in transcendent dreams, I would have to say that seems to be true. So anyway, now that I've taken the sting out of the word faulty, let me uh, now move on to what is the number one uh, logical flaw we all make every night when we're dreaming. Time's up. You think you're awake. And with all of this bizarre, weird crap going on all around you, you think you're awake. That's the number one logical flaw. Now, for lucid dreamers who become aware that they're dreaming during the course of a dream, does their logic suddenly become better? Well, the answer to that is not necessarily. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Now, there are degrees of lucidity, but I can't go into that tonight. It's, uh, you know, it's another subject entirely. There are, there are really all kinds of degrees of lucidity, and it's a fascinating phenomenon in and of itself. But uh, to give you some examples of faulty logic, when I was completely lucid, uh, my daughter Hillary, about 10 years ago, she was in her upper teens, hadn't had a lucid dream yet. So I was, you know, you know, kind of like, you know, trying to get her, you know, interested in this and, you know, get her to have one. And, uh, and then one night she suddenly appeared in one of my lucid dreams. Well, what a perfect opportunity to teach her lucid dreaming, right? So I taught her how to walk through a plate glass window. Then I took her outside and we went flying together. And of course, I pointed everything out, and you know, it was, and I was really jazzed during the dream. Of course, when I woke up, and I can, I'm sure you see where this is going. I knew that if I picked up the phone and I called Hillary and said, "Hey, Hillary, what do you think about that lucid dream we were just in?" She would think I was drinking again. Now, I also want to point out that in that dream, we walked to a plate glass window. Then I took her outside to start flying. Another logical flaw. You know, why take her outside? You can fly through the ceiling, you can fly through the wall. But the reason I did is, and I'm going to cut myself some slack on this, and I think most lucid dreamers would agree with me on this. In dreams, even when we're lucid, we still tend to walk through doorways instead of through walls. We're creatures of habit from our waking world, and it's just a natural tendency to therefore follow the same behaviors. So, uh, Okay, now the second example I've, I have of faulty logic when lucid, and this one's very recent, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, I was in a dream and there were, I was in like this antiquarian book slash antique store. And uh, I had all this really, you know, curious quaint volumes of forgotten lore, the kind of things I would really relish, and all of these weird artifacts, and the kind of thing I like. Although, you know, in this American consumer society where we have to have more and more stuff, I have to gratefully say I'm getting a little bit past that, thankfully. You know, I'm liquidating less is more. But that's getting off the subject. But nevertheless, despite the fact I'm liquidating less is more, in the dream, I was drooling over this stuff I wanted. So it's hard to break habits, as I just discussed a minute ago. So while I was despondent in my dream that I'm retired now, I'm on a fixed income, I have to think before I buy, what a drag, I can't be flopping down those credit cards and transferring balances. So anyway, then I suddenly became lucid. And when I became lucid, of course I thought, I don't have to pay for this stuff. I don't have to worry about being on a fixed income. It's my dream, it's mine. So I loaded up all the stuff and out I walked. 
well, woke up and, you know, didn't bring any of it back with me. A failure in logic. So that's that. Well, this might go on record as being my uh, shortest discourse, so I better get going while the going's good. So uh, anyway, the next talk is going to be on uh, false remembrance, which is really fascinating. I'm going to have to give that some extra time and uh, uh, organization because uh, I, I, there's parts of that I really don't want to uh, miss talking about. So, uh, so until then, uh, everybody out there stay healthy and I leave you to the wisdom of the night.